Welcome to the fourth video session in our series where you learn how to build and program your own TNC controlled quadcopter. In the previous video, you learned how to measure the remaining flight time of your quadcopter. In this video, I will explain a key component, the MPU 6050 gyroscope necessary to keep the quadcopter level. This blue component is situated in the front of your quadcopter and is responsible of measuring the rotation rates. Three rotation directions are used in the field of aeronautics. Roll, pitch and yaw. A roll rotation means that you rotate clockwise around the x-axis of the gyroscope. A pitch rotation means that you rotate clockwise around the y-axis of the gyroscope. And finally, in a yaw rotation, you rotate counterclockwise around the Z axis of the MPU 6050. In all cases, you can observe that the axis around which you rotate is the only axis that keeps pointing to the same direction during the rotation movement. Notice that the X and Y axis and their respective rotation directions are also written physically on the MPU 6050 sensor itself. Once again, the sensor does not come with the headers soldered on, meaning that you will have to do some soldering yourself. While I solder the MPU 6050, let's reflect on the physical value measured by the gyroscope. A gyroscope measures the rotation rate, which can be expressed with the unit's degrees per second. When you want a quadcopter to stay at its current orientation, the rotation rate will need to be equal to zero degrees per second. This will be very important for your flight controller. The communication protocol that your microcontroller will use to read the information of the MPU 6050 is I2C. This protocol needs two wires, a serial communication line SDA through which the data can be transferred bit by bit and a line that carries the clock signal or SCL. Pin 16 to 19 of your TNC can accommodate these lines. The schematic is shown in the figure to the right. Power the gyroscope by connecting the 5 volt DC output to the VCC pin and ground to ground. Connect the SCL and SDA pins to the TC pins 19 and 18 respectively. Let's start programming. The code for the I2C protocol is rather complex, so you use a predefined library called wire.h. This was normally installed automatically when you installed TC Duino. Define the roll, pitch and yaw rates in degrees per second as global variables. You will write the output of the measurements from the sensor to these variables. Use once again a function to get the data from the gyro. With the I2C protocol, each device has its unique address. For our MPU 6050, this address can be found in the register documentation and has a default value of 0 times 68. Some registers can be accessed to select some predefined options. One of these options is a low-pass filter. The register has the hexadecimal address 1A. Choose a low-pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 10 Hz, which corresponds to the DLPF value of 5. The low-pass filter is essential for the use of a gyroscope on a quadcopter, because the motor vibrations will cause the rotation rates to be all over the place. This figure shows the measured rotation rates with and without a low-pass filter for a stationary quadcopter at increasing motor speeds. In addition to the low-pass filter, you also need to set the sensitivity scale factor of the sensor. The address of the register where you can adjust the scale factor is 1B. The measurements of the MPU 6050 are recorded in LSB, or least significant bits. Let's choose a sensitivity setting of 65.5 LSB per degrees per second. This corresponds to the FSSEL setting of 1. The other settings in the register can be set to zero, giving a binary representation as shown on the screen. 
Converting this to a hexadecimal value gives an address equal to 0 times 8. Now you are ready to import the measurement values of the gyro. These are located in the registers that hold the gyroscope measurements, which have the hexadecimal numbers 43 to 48. Start writing to address 0 times 43 to indicate the first register you will use. Now request 6 bytes from the MPU6050 such that you can pull the information of the 6 registers 43 to 48 from the sensor. The gyro measurements are the result of an unsigned 16-bit measurement. Declare gyro x as an unsigned 16-bit integer. Because the measurement of the rotation rate around the x-axis is spread out over two registers with each 8 bits, you will have to merge this information by calling wire.read twice. Repeat the same code for the other rotation rates. The measurements are expressed in LSB, but you want this information in degrees per second. You have set the LSB sensitivity scale factor of the MPU6050 equal to 65.5. Therefore, just divide the values in LSB by 65.5. Set the clock speed of the I2C protocol to 400 kHz. This value comes from the product specifications. Use a delay of 250 milliseconds to give the MPU6050 time to start. To activate the MPU6050, write to the power management register, which has the hexadecimal number 6B. All bits in this register have to be set to zero in order for the device to start and continue in power mode. Terminate the connection with the gyroscope and end the setup section. In the loop part of the code, call your function and print the roll, pitch and yaw rates on the serial monitor. Wait 50 milliseconds after each loop to be able to read the values on the serial monitor and close the loop function. Upload the code to your microcontroller and open the serial monitor. Now move the gyroscope in the roll, pitch and yaw directions and watch how the rotation rates change on the screen. Notice that not all values are equal to zero for the axes that are not moving. This issue will be the subject of the next video.